So we had a new client come in recently and it was quite an interesting one. They're an antique dealer about to become VAT registered. Um, so they're going to have to comply with making tax digital. Um, and obviously with antique dealers um, and VAT, they will use the margin scheme. And so we had to think of a way that we could use QuickBooks Online um, and get the VAT right for the margin scheme. So um, we came up with an answer and I thought I would share it because it's quite um, unique in terms of what we've looked at so far uh, for VAT on QuickBooks. Um, and so a little bit of background about the margin scheme to start with. Um, effectively, the way it works is um, you only pay the VAT on the profit that you make on um, selling an item which you've previously bought, um, which you didn't claim VAT on the purchase. Um, and the record keeping requirements for the margin scheme, um, are you have to record the, uh, the stock number um, of the purchase, the, the date, the invoice number, price, name of the seller, description of the item, and on the sale, the date of the sale, the sales invoice number, the selling price, uh, the name of the buyer, and then uh, what's key is that the margin on the sale has been recorded and then the um, obviously the VAT as well. So typically um, the way that this works for antique dealers is they'll keep um, these records in a stock book. Um, but like I said, we've actually found a, a nice way of doing it on QuickBooks Online. So I'm going to go through that now. So the first thing that we had to do, and, and this is in our sample company here, GMT, is we're going to create a stock item. And this is going to have to be done every time that, every time that they buy um, an item of stock, just as they would in, the, uh, in a stock book that was written manually, you would have to create a, a new item. So I'm going to go here and uh, this requires the plus version of QuickBooks Online. Um, so we're going to say that this is uh, some antique shares. Uh, and we're going to give it code 0001. So you can categorize these if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to worry about that at this stage um, or the class. Um, so the quantity on hand here, that's going to be zero. And we're going to put in the quantity through a expense in QuickBooks. So the as of date, I will just do that as of the 1st of August because I didn't have any them. I only bought them yesterday. Um, I don't want a low stock alert, so I'm going to leave that blank. I'm happy for the, the asset account to just be the default there, stock asset. And we, we don't need to enter a description here for the sale because we're going to put that in somewhere else. Um, uh, this can just be whichever income account you want to record your income in. Uh, this one's key though. This one has to be the selling, uh, the selling price here that you put in has to be the same as the purchase price. So what I'm going to say is that we bought those a couple of antique shares yesterday for a, a thousand pounds. And I want that to be inclusive of tax, not that it matters too much. And I'm going to say that that is no VAT. And purchase the purchase information next. And teach us times two, it costs a thousand pounds. And I want those to go into the cost of sales once they've sold. And, um, Obviously, this doesn't matter too much. I'm just going to take that for consistency, and that will be no VAT as well. Um, you can forget about the preferred supplier. That's not important at this stage. So we've saved that. And now what we need to do is add in one for the profit margin that we're going to make when we sell it. So I've done this one already, so I'll just open that up and show you what it looks like. Um, so effectively, this is a service item, and we've just called it profit margin there. 
We don't need to put any information in at all. Um, the key here though, is that we have this set at 20% and that's gonna be inclusive of tax. I'm not gonna put a rate in because this is gonna be different on every item that you would sell. So we'll save that. And the next step that we need to take is to now create a bundle. And we're gonna call this uh, and chairs. The name of this has to be slightly different to the name of the item that you put in for the chairs because QuickBooks won't let you put uh, the name in, the same name in twice. Um, and, and this is the one that's going to show up on your invoice when you sell it. Um, so the customer is going to see this. So just make sure that it's something that's um, relevant. Um, I'm just going to say uh, oak chairs, 1930s. I don't know anything about antiques. Uh, so set up two. And then here we're going to go, uh, we're going to put those antique chairs in there and the profit margin in there. So we've got a quantity of one there and one there. So um, this is a quantity of one because um, we're not going to sell these separately. Um, if we were going to sell them separately, then in the first step, you would want to have put this in as a quantity of two as for the antique chairs um, because you could sell them um, individually but in this case we're not going to do that so that the quantity of one is fine um, so we don't want to display the bundle components um, and you'll see why we don't want to do that uh, once we go through it so i'm going to save and close that for now so now what we want to do is move um, these chairs into stock so we're going to add a new expense in. Uh, who did we pay? We paid an antique dealer. And we probably paid them in cash. And I bought those yesterday. And so here, uh, the key is that we use item details. So what we're gonna go for here is some antique chairs. And that all looks fine. So if I press save on that, then what's happened now is we've brought these into stock so stock has increased and cash has decreased there. So our new, our new cash balance is there minus a thousand. So I had a, uh, a buy for these chairs straight away. And so now we want to show the sale. Uh, we'll have a quick look actually at what the stock says for this. So we've got uh, a, Antique chairs here, you see the quantity on hand is one. Uh, so now what we want to do is go ahead and sell them. So we're gonna use the sales receipt to do this. Because again, this, it was in, in cash. Um, I'll just put in one of our uh, customers that we've already got set up. So yesterday, it's got the sales receipt number in there. Um, we sold it in cash, so I want it to go there. So what we're going to do here is, this time we're going to use the, the bundle that we created. So there it is. And you can see here, this has popped up with two of these um, items which are in the bundle. So we've got the antique chairs here and the, the rate there has come in as the purchase price that we set up. So we know that um, this is correct. And 
that's going to be with no VAT. And the profit margin is fairly self-explanatory. This is the difference between what we bought the item for and what we sold it for. So we sold it for £1,500. So there's already a 1000 in there, so I'm going to put another 500 in. This one's going to be at 20%. And so you can see there, what we've got is the VAT is only coming in on the profit there. And this is inclusive of tax. So the sale in cash of 1500, 500 profit. So 500 divided by six is 83 pounds 33. So I'm gonna save that. Um, if you wanted to provide the customer with a receipt, then you could send them this. And you see all that they're seeing in that is that they've got some oak chairs, a set of two. There's nothing to do with the profit margin in there. Um, so this should make sense to the customer. You can see, they can see that it includes a little bit of that there. And uh, because it's a sales receipt, it was received in cash, so there's none left due. And so if I close out of this, it's going to take us back to this screen here. And we can see that the antique chairs now, there's zero quantity on hand. So the stock has reduced to zero. And there's no value left in the stock because um, we use that um, stock item of a, a thousand that, uh, to take it out and we got the profit on there as well so hopefully that all makes sense um, feel free to send us a message if you'd like some more information on how to do this uh, otherwise thanks for watching